breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? It's Uncle Freedom coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And today we're going to take a look at a special request from a viewer of the channel, and that is talking about home defense setups, handguns, rifles, shotguns, what have you. We're going to deep dive all of it today, so it should be a good time. So if that sounds fun and interesting to you, go ahead, like, subscribe, tell a friend. The channel is growing. It's awesome. I really I'm just shocked at how well this this has gone. Uh, it's it's a great time. If you're looking to get in touch with me, it's at Uncle Freedom Two One Three on Facebook or Instagram, or Uncle Freedom Two One Three at Outlook.com. If you're looking to support the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe because that's the best way to do it. Or you can take a look down in the description box below. All the affiliates of the channel exist down there. People like Dark Angel Medical, Dry Fire Mag, Gun Mag Warehouse. If you were going to do it anyway and you use those links, it helps the channel. And for that, I thank you. So I figured we'll take a look and we'll start off with something super awesome that just came in. This is the based healer patch from a polite society. That's right. I am super stoked on that. I will not be wearing that at work. <laughs> so, so your home defense setup and situation. Now this is, this is kind of a hot button issue and I have done like my top 13 tips. I'll leave it a link over here somewhere that goes to, uh, for home defense where I cover more tactics based on home defense and not necessarily the gear I'm talking about. But what I was asked for this time was actually the gear. So when we talk about home defense, everybody's got their brain in their brain, what we're, you know, they're going to do the old school version of I'm just going to pump my shotgun and they're going to run away or I'm going to do a warning shot or, you know, I've got an AR sitting by the bed, what, whatever your version of, home defense setup looks like and what we're going to look at today is how to make that better and kind of the way i view home defense so for me i break it down i have three options for home defense and those three options are going to be the handgun the shotgun and the rifle so if we start talking about a handgun um this guy is clear so this is actually one that got sent to me that we're going to play around with and see how it works. Yes, this is a Bear Creek Arsenal Glock clone um, with a metal frame and a Siley Wolf 2 optic that's going to get played with. Believe it or not, this thing has a really good trigger, but we're going to use this mainly today as an option to talk about. So what I'm talking about for your handgun, there are certain requirements that I would look to in a handgun for it to be a home defense handgun. Things like your Glock 26 or your P365, if that's all you have, okay. However, that's not what I would choose. We're not talking about all you have. We're talking about if I could do this my way, this is what I would do. So first up for me would be a full-size handgun. That means something, you know, minimum Glock 19 uh, size. So we're talking that 15-round capacity, 4-inch barrel or longer, right? I'm, I'm game with, with bigger here. This is the thing about home defense. It doesn't matter because you're not carrying it in your pants. Have the best option you can get. So we're talking about a full-size handgun with a full-size weapon light. Whether that is the Streamlight TLR1HL or you want to go with the Mod Light PL350G2 or you want to go with the Surefire X300 or the X300 Turbo, I don't care, but this is the place where a full-size weapon light lives. This is not the place for your 500 lumen uh, Streamlight TLR7A. Again, you don't ever want to go into a world with the anticipation that you're going to have a substandard option when you could have a better option. This is not the place to intentionally handicap yourself for internet clout or because you think it looks cool. So the next thing I'm going to look at on my defense handgun is a red dot. Now, the reason I'm going to want a red dot over a set of iron sights is not because of anything you might actually think. It's that when I am dog tired and I've just been woken up and I'm running out, it is a hell of a lot easier for me to just target focus and put dot on target, pull trigger. So that's what we're going with. I want a dot on my handgun. I want that full size weapon light because it enhances my ability to be more effective in a home defense manner. 
So for ammo for the handgun, this is kind of how this started was people wanted to know this. Well, ammo for a handgun, what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose a real duty round. I want gold dots. I want critical duty. I want uh, federal HSTs. I want uh, Winchester Ranger tees. Or I was going to do something outside of the box, a Lehigh Defender uh, round. The ammo should be reliable and consistent from your weapons platform. If you only had 20 rounds of it and you shot three rounds of it, that is not proven reliable. Your optic should be zeroed to that ammo. Your ammo should have had plenty put through it, and you should be very capable with it because we are, after all, talking about discharging a firearm in a life-or-death encounter inside of our own home. You need to be good with your stuff. Uh, the next thing I'm going to say as far as your handgun goes, it shouldn't be in a safe. It, that's going to rub somebody the wrong way, but there is no reason that you're going to ever convince me of that my immediate access firearm, if I am choosing a handgun to defend myself, needs to be locked in anything that prevents me from just doing this and going to work. If I have to do any stage beyond grabbing that thing and going, I have screwed up. I have put a barrier between my life expectancy on the shot timer that is a gunfight already starting because I want it. No, don't. It should not be in a safe. It should be ready to go when you get ready to go there. But that does bring up an interesting question, though. So if you were to jump out of bed in the middle of the night because your wife's like, holy crap, gun, you go run out to engage bad guy. Um, and you are just carrying a handgun, and now you have to do something with your hands, what do you anticipate doing with that handgun? We're going to talk about some other options in a second, things that people are going to say, like a holster, a battle belt, yada, yada, yada. Going to give you some things to think about that probably aren't going to go the way you're going to think, but that is a big problem we're going to have with a handgun is, what do we do with it when we need our hands? So next up, the next thing people talk about is the shotgun. Uh, it's ubiquitous in home defense lore, just racket, and it makes noise, and it scares people away. Newsflash, that is not how that works. It is a really good indicator, though, that you're about to get jacked up by some dude in the back corner when you hear a shotgun rack. Um, but it doesn't scare people the way you think. Most of the time, you have to consider... The people that it would scare away most of the time are going to be career criminals who are not about getting killed in order to obtain your stuff. Um, however, most of the guys that are going to be doing B&Es and burglars, these are people on drugs and kind of the scourge of society. If you think they're going to rationally think their way through anything when they just kicked in your door to steal like your, your Ty Beanie Babies collection, you are out of your freaking mind. The biggest mistake we make as human beings is assuming that other people actually give a crap if they live through the encounter. Nobody said that's the case. Nobody said they're going to want to make it through this whole thing. They might not care because they're stoned out of their mind, which is what most B&Es come from. So your shotgun, we're going to be looking at an 18 to 22 inch pump action shotgun. That's right. No semi-automatics for this game. And the reason being is... Semi-automatics tend to be incredibly ammo picky. They are also very picky if you do not mount and run that shotgun in a specific fashion. Pump actions are just more reliable. Yes, I know. The Beretta 1301 is awesome. The M4 is amazing. However, pump guns tend not to have issues, but there are just issues in general with a shotgun. Your shotgun should be equipped with a red dot. Again, it's an easier aiming solution. Don't handicap yourself with a harder to use system. It's not, I should not have to have this conversation with people. Anyway, red dot, a sling, because that solves the problem of what do I do with the shotgun when I need my hands? Sling is important and a white light, preferably a white light mounted to the firearm that you can control and manipulate with your off hand. So one of the big problems that we run into with shotguns, I, I love shotguns, but we have a very high amount of reliability issues with semi-automatic because of that ammo finickiness compared to a pump. However, due to the manual of arms of just running a shotgun, no, it is not as intuitive as you've told everybody it's, it is. It's not. 
I, I see people all the time that have tons of experience around firearms that, that can't run a pump action shotgun even because the manual of arms is just not the same as anything else. People will short stroke a pump action gun, meaning they won't get it all the way back far enough to get the next shell to discharge and go into the firearm, this rendering it into a giant stick that you've got in your house that makes noise when it works. But another place shotguns really fail, like hardcore fail, is going to be for apartment dwellers. If you're one of those people that live in an apartment because that is the world that you live in, a shotgun is not going to be something I am ever going to recommend for use. That's because shotguns have a really nasty habit of just going through things. Um, they are also nowhere near as accurate as some of the other options we're going to have. But it's just a no-go. Shotguns are a no-fly zone for an apartment dweller. So basically what we're talking about for shotguns are people that own their home. They also live in an area, you know, they may not have to worry about over penetration, things of that nature. Woo, let's knock that over. But some of the best rounds that you're going to find for a shotgun, especially in a home defense, and one of my favorites, and a reason I say pump actions are awesome, is the Federal Shorty Shotgun Shells in number four buck. Those are surprisingly potent, especially inside of home distances. Because it's so short, you now have a much higher capacity than you normally would in your shotgun. Um, Outside of that, we would be looking at Hornaday or Federal Reduced Recoil Double Lock. No, I don't care how manly you think you are because you shoot a three-inch Magnum Double Lock Buckshot. Nobody cares because if you miss your follow-up shot or your first shot because you flinch so bad that you could see the inside of your butthole, you probably shouldn't be shooting full power loads in your house. Reduced Recoil, there's a reason it exists. No, you're not less manly because you use it, but you do have better target accuracy. Um, and any number four buck shot that you could get as well. I like number four buck. I have found it to be, there's more pellets, more damage. No, it's not a nine millimeter diameter projectile with nine pellets, but it is a lot more pellets and they are very devastating inside of a home thing. Um, when you keep your shotgun stored, your shells should be kept at the ready. You should have your shotgun loaded in what's known as cruiser ready fashion. Cruiser ready means a full magazine tube, but an empty chamber with the hammer down. Meaning all you have to do is grab it, rack the slide, and you can go to work. I know somebody's going to be like, whoa, you know, I just, I just leave it with the, the chamber closed with the pump forward and stuff. But they, what they have is a cock trigger. This presents a problem because in order to manipulate that, you either have to pull the trigger, not a good idea at two in the morning when you just got woken up, because if you got it wrong at all, you just put a whole bunch of holes in crap. The other option would be, you have to reach up and either hit the, the pump release, either front or back, depending on the shotgun that you got, in order to rack that shell in. Versus Cruiser Ready, which is a full magazine tube and an empty chamber that you've pressed the trigger on. That means all I have to do is grab it and rack it, right? No extra steps, no nothing. I do not believe in carrying long guns loaded. Um, I know safeties exist, but it's a whole lot easier for you to train from a cruiser ready configuration than it is um, hotter. The time discrepancy is not really there uh, to make a difference. When I start talking about rounds for a shotgun though, I am referring only to two and three quarter shells unless you're shooting mini shells. Because again, there is zero reason and nobody gives a crap how manly you are that you could burn out three inch ultra magnum double buck buckshot out of your pump gun into the bad guy who just came into your house. Nobody cares. I promise they're going to be just as jacked up with reduced recoil and you're probably going to have better accuracy. Uh, all of your extra shells, because here is the big pitfall of a shotgun, is its ammo capacity. So you should either have shells in a side saddle or in a readily accessible thing so that you can constantly be topping off your shotgun. We call it feeding the baby. You should always be feeding the baby, right? It should happen. But shotguns are really hard to do this in. And this comes back to that manual of arms thing and how much more difficult shotguns are to run efficiently in a combat scenario compared to something like a semi-automatic handgun. And then we'll look at your rifle. For your rifle, I am primarily referring to the AR-15 platform. It is a, just a good platform. We are talking somewhere between 10, 3, and 16 inches for your barrel length. And we are also going to store it cruiser ready, meaning a loaded magazine in the gun. I don't care if your hammer's down or not. 
but a loaded magazine in the gun so you grab it, rack charging handle, go to work. When I talk about these, I'm going to give you a couple of options as far as ammo goes since I can tailor out a AR platform's loading so far um, to get the best possible option. So I'm going to break it down into two options, one of which being the SBR, which is anything 10.3 to roughly 12.5, and then your GPR length or general purpose rifle that's going to come in between 13.7 and 16 inches for your barrel length. It should always be equipped with a sling. There is not a reason on the planet that your rifle shouldn't have a sling on it. For the love of God, put a sling on your rifle, especially in this configuration. Your rifle has to have a sling. Again, you have to have a red dot and a white light. I personally prefer pressure pads for my white lights on guns because it allows me to keep a uncompromised forehand or offhand grip on the rifle, though you may not like them. And if you can manipulate a tail cap, good for you, right? I just don't personally care for it. I'm a pressure pad guy myself. LPVOs are going to be a no-go for your home defense rifle. The reason they're going to be a no-go is because LPVOs have compromised light transition. You also have abysmal battery life in an LPVO. If you forget to turn that thing off and it's not always ready to go, which is one of the reasons I like red dots, because they are always ready to go when you grab the firearm. If I have to turn on my LPVO in a high stress environment where I've just been woken up and my main concern is defending my family, the odds of me remembering to turn that damn LPVO on are almost non-existent. Uh, and that's from a guy that does this all the time. LPVOs also suffer from terrible light transmission, meaning that your image is going to be darker when looking through that, even on one power. And we would all agree that if we're talking about this scenario and you were just woken up, it's probably freaking dark in your house, which means your terrible light transition with non-illuminated reticle are not going to go real well. We would We could agree to that, right? But a red dot, always on, always effective. You're, you're inside of your house, man. Like, unless you live in some kind of otherworldly fashion that I don't understand, you don't have a 200 yard round, sh uh, 200 yard shot in your home. But if you got it like that, go you. So, if we're going to, um, and the other problem I have with LPVOs is there is a, a high likelihood that you can mess it up. Meaning, when you were messing with it before you went to bed, you had the magnification on like eight which is going to be super useful when you pick it up at two in the morning and you're like 10 feet away or 15 feet away from a dude coming through your door and you're trying to hunt through this freaking tube to figure out where the hell he went with an eight power optic. It's, it's a chance for you to mess it up. They're also susceptible to your eye box, meaning if you don't mount the gun exactly right, because again, you're tired, you just got woken up, you might not even see your crap. Red dots telling you red dots that's the way we do it so when we talk about ammunition for your rifle this is an area that i can really tailor made out my ammo for what i want to do i am going to look for an apartment dweller i want a varmint round a thin skinned round that dematerializes inside of a target and doesn't really have penetration capability if i hit something not the target so i'm talking 40 to 55 grain varmint rounds your vmax your varmageddon um you know, your Sierra Blitz Kings, the Fiocchi loading of VMAX, awesome stuff, and you get 50 of them at a time. And that's going to be the same for your general purpose or your SBR. Outside of that, we're going to talk about for the homeowner guy. So if you own your home, maybe you live on property, you have some land, you don't have to worry about going through a single layer of sheetrock and hitting that neighbor that keeps you awake constantly with his weird, like, deviant fantasies as he watches, you know, the P-Hub at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm still going to say, if you have any over penetration concern, run a freaking varmint round because they just work. However, if you got a question about it and you might have to punch through something or go a little longer, you have different concerns. It's okay at this point. Now we can start looking at for your SBR gold dot 55s, 55 grain critical defense, uh, for 16 inch or longer, you know, that. 13.7 13, to 16 inch gun. Now we can start talking about copper projectiles, which are ultra tough. You know, the, the Barnes TSX, TTSX, the Hornady CX round, gold dots in 55 or 75 grain. Critical defense, if I'm running a longer barrel, I'm running 73 grain. Um, TUI, the Ranger uh, SBSP, and oh, another one for the SBR. So that would be the Hornady Black 75 grain interlock, one of the best uh, 
barrier rounds that is on the planet and it's specifically made for shorter barrels. You will notice I don't mention OTMs or the Mark 262. And the reason I don't mention them in this capacity is because yes, they are really good at what they do, but they are inconsistent in how the terminal effect happens. It may go in an inch and do it. It may also go in three inches and do it and not put the threat down. If I'm inside of my house and I'm fighting a dude that, d that is chosen that whatever I own is more important than his life, I am going to err on the side of, I want instant gratification. If I put a round into the pump house, I don't want it to go in two inches, not do what it's supposed to do, and then miss out on stopping the threat instantly. So if we start talking about some pros and cons of your three different platforms. So let's start with shotguns since that seems to be the most polarizing. For cons for a shotgun, you've got really low ammunition capacity. They are very, they are so much harder for the manual of arms to operate than a standard AR or a handgun. There is a ton of freaking recoil. Uh, don't kid yourself. They suck to shoot. Shotguns have a lot of recoil. They are the absolute worst offender of over penetration when it comes to doing it, but then also highly ineffective if we step back at 50 yards and shoot somebody with things sometimes. They are incredibly slow to recoil and they take constant management to keep your rounds topped up. There is also an extremely high risk of collateral damage to your property with a shotgun because if I miss, I didn't just put a single spicy 22 hole into wallboard. I put nine freaking double op buckshot rounds through my wallboard. And it's not just the sheetrock. What if you hit your wiring and crap inside of the wall? Lots of problems involved with it. That risk doesn't exist the same way with different platforms as it does with a shotgun. They are also sometimes incredibly hard to outfit with dots, lights, um, and again, recoil, man. <laughs> like, But your pros are, they are 100% devastating. You hit a dude in the chest, double up buckshot or number four buck, that, that is the end of that entire situation. That, that is so potent, like his family tree died off. Um, also with a shotgun, cover is merely a suggestion. Dude hides behind door. Shotguns don't care about your door. There's a reason we use them to blow holes in doors to gain entry. Um, shotguns scare the hell out of people. That's another big one. They, they really, they really do. Shotguns are one of those things like if you've got a shotgun pointed at you, it's this is not a situation that I want to repeat ever. If there is more than one attacker, shotguns also offer the pro of being psychologically disabling. If you have two guys in your home and little Jimmy runs around the corner and takes nine pellets of double lock into the chest, his buddy ain't going to want no part of that anymore. That's going to be the end of that fight. They're also very inexpensive usually to get into, and the ammo is readily available anywhere ammo would be sold, including places ammo is typically not sold like hardware stores. So then we go to rifles, which seems to have a weird connotation because for some reason people have it in their brain that a 5.56 rifle has vastly more over penetration risk than a shotgun or a handgun, and I'm here to tell you they actually offer the least. So your cons with a rifle are they are incredibly loud. They make lots of freaking noise. Um, they are very velocity dependent, meaning if you select the wrong ammunition for what you're doing and you do not hit something going at a good enough velocity, your terminal effects will suffer and you could not solve the problem. Uh, good ammo for your AR and a home defense rifle is exceedingly expensive. You are not going to buy 50 cents around. Well, you're not going to buy much for 50 cents around anymore at all, which is dumb. But you're not going to buy good defensive ammo for 50 cents around that you're going to trust for a defensive encounter. They can be hard to use inside of close quarter distances. If you come through doors and you're not used to manipulating a longer firearm through doors and narrower hallways, you can actually compromise yourself as well as flagging your muzzle beyond a threshold in starting your clock early if, a if an attacker is actually watching for it to happen. Um, and it can be really, really expensive to set up an AR for home defense. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. Another big thing that people don't talk about enough is the mechanical offset that exists in AR. You have an inch and a half offset. 
At seven yards, if you put a round into a dude, you have an inch and a half offset. If you get that wrong, you might shoot the wrong thing or you might not hit what you intended to. But let's look at the pros of America's rifle. Pros of America's rifle are they are very easy to be accurate with. They are arguably the simplest platform on the planet to make effective, accurate hits with. They're just good. <laughs> um, they are very intuitive to operate. You have, so oh, shit, bit my tongue. You have stock you have pistol grip you have safety you have trigger you have charging handle. they are super easy and in a very short amount of time you can become efficient at manipulating an ar because they are so intuitive and ergonomic to run easy to find i can buy an ar online right now and have one built out in like 60 minutes or less it is very easy to do you have incredible ammo capacity you have a minimum of a standard capacity magazine on board unless you live in one of those non-free states. And if that's the case, man, I feel for you. I, if you can leave, I would recommend it. But I understand sometimes you can't. Um, there is a very low risk of collateral damage with a rifle uh, because it is so accurate. The odds of you putting around into something you don't want to are pretty low. And even if you do, it's a 22 hole. Patch that shit up with some drywall mud. I, one of my favorite parts is they are very easy to outfit with optics, lights, slings, things of that nature. And they are very easy to tailor the ammo for your expected problem, which is not something we can do with other options. And then your handgun. Pros and cons of your handgun. Oh, pro of the rifle too is it is the lowest risk of overpenetration. It still does exist, mainly if you miss. So if overpenetration is a concern, don't run crap that goes through walls. But handguns. Handguns are the most inaccurate option we have as a home defense gun. Why is that? Well, because at most, I have two points of contact with a firearm. I have a thing dangling in space. I don't have extra points of contact to make it more accurate. Handguns are the hardest thing to shoot accurately with any consistency. They are the absolute least effective option we have as far as terminal effects go. Handguns put holes in things. You are poking holes and attempting to either cause enough hydraulic fluid to leak out to seize the machine, or you're connecting with something that turns off the operating system immediately. There are really high overpenetration risk with a handgun. Because here's the thing. Even if we use a very effective barrier blind projectile uh, or a very good home defense projectile, good hollow point, it is still going to go right through a couple of walls if you miss what you're shooting at. Now, once you hit what you're aiming at, good ammo limits your risk of overpenetration like tenfold. But if you miss, it's going to go through some crap because handguns are slow moving and have a lot of mass. Um, they do require a lot more practice for you to shoot at a highly efficient level. If you don't have a holster with you, I don't know where you're going to put it because you can't go hands-free the way I can with a handgun or with a rifle or a shotgun. And the user of the handgun is probably one of the most consistent causes of malfunctions if you have a quality handgun. Things like limp wristing not being high enough on the grip, dropping your magazine when you don't intend to, hitting your slide stop with your thumb because you have a high grip. These are malfunctions we induce as shooters. Even the most competent shooters induce malfunctions like this sometimes. But your pros are they are very easy to work inside of structures and indoors. They are utterly reliable as long as you buy them from a reputable manufacturer. They are the convenient option. This is the one place where you buying a gun to carry for your EDC that is a full-size styled or Glock 19 size firearm. You can EDC the same firearm that you have for home defense. Can't do that with an AR. So in, easily more convenient. Also great if you're a traveler and you're in like a hotel. Odds are you're going to have your handgun. You may not have your rifle. They are very easy to reload and get back into a fight. Most malfunctions can be user cleared in a matter of seconds. They are very easy to run with only one hand if this hand happens to be doing something else or if I get injured. They can be outfitted very well, as you see with this. This is a very inexpensive outload with a dot and a light. And the light options that are available for handguns are exceptionally good. I mean, things like the TLR 1HL with 20,000 candela and 1,000 lumens, all the way to 66,000 candela in a Surefire 3, X300 Turbo. So now that we've talked about that part of it, there's some things that we need to actually discuss. 
And that is, it's your home. This is your chance to stage, the only chance you'll ever have to stage your scenario for potential contact with a threat. Like, take advantage of that crap. Um, you need to have a very well laid out plan for your family, and you have to practice it in this scenario as well. Bad guys are always going to get to go first. You don't get to go first. You were woken up because somebody was doing something stupid in your house. Bad guys are going to go first. Something I, I don't think people understand a lot, and I hear this a lot, is body armor, pistol belts, all this other stuff, right, for my home defense setup. Home defense is kind of a run what you brung um, game. The time required for you to start, like, welcome to the jungle playing as you kill the lights and pick it up with your NVGs on, you know, and you go in dark is a fallacy. You're not going to do that. It would be really cool, and I hope you got it on video, but it is a fallacy unless you have like a really good early warning system, which in that case, it would be really hard to justify some of the actions you had taken. Um, food for thought. You're also going to be going from dead asleep, like having awesome dreams with supermodels on beaches or whatever you dream about, I don't judge, to incredibly hyper-awake with shit in your pants Pretty, pretty quick. So the odds of uh, you going like and looking super rainbow six as you like dump bad dudes probably ain't going to happen. You're not going to go John Wick this crap. This isn't real life, man. <laughs> That's a fallacy. Real life fights are ugly. Um, and you are probably, and this is food for thought, you are more than likely going to be, I mean, this is a chance that you're going to have that you're going to fight butt naked with a gun. Um, good news is nobody wants to get their ass kicked by a naked guy. So you got that going for you. Um, you could also just be a naked dude with a fanny pack on and a handgun in your hand, also an option, or your man purse. I don't judge. Do you, man, but this is a, this is a real thing. But there should be a piece of kit that is attached to your home defense setup, whether that is your rifle or your handgun. And that's going to be some sort of kit. For me personally, I run the 511 two-banger bag. That is my option. That is my man purse as I stand there naked in the middle of the night with whatever I'm engaging with. Um, and I could also stick my handgun inside of it, whatever to, again, for it, my hands, but something important would be a very bright handheld like this mod light, um, 18650 OKW, very bright, very effective handheld because I can still be looking here with this and have this. And then if I need to use this, I can use this. If I need to hold this guy and look for his friend, I can do that. A good handheld light is important. Also, don't go punning, pointing guns at crap. You don't know what it is. Handheld lights are great. You will need spare ammo, even if it's just a spare magazine. I personally keep chem lights in mind, but that is more of the law enforcement part of my brain being like, I marked a clear area or I marked where the body was, what have you. Flex cuffs, because nobody said he's going to like just cease existing in your living room. There is a high likelihood that once wounded, they will become whatever drugs they've got there on have turned them into freaking Superman and a T 1000. You might need to restrain someone inside of your home. Flex cuffs are great for that. They're very inexpensive. You can do Cobras, you can do ASP, whatever medical of some kind, because odds are if you get into a two way battle with somebody in your home, somebody's going to get wounded and the odds of it being you, it's a 50, 50 shot. And given the fact that they went first, might be higher. So a medical kit of some kind. Now, here is something that is not spoken about much, and I'm going to leave you with this because I think it is super freaking important, and that is Ear Pro. Even with a can on a supersonic rifle, the crack is loud. Now, if you're running a freaking 9-inch Tasty 300 Blackout with a can on it, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, that thing's quiet. Um, but again, if you're on a two-way firing range, that dude's stuff is probably not suppressed. I know everybody talks about auditory exclusion. Auditory exclusion is the natural response of the human body that limits what you hear. The sound pre overpressure levels that are damaging your hearing are still taking place, whether it seemed loud at the time because your adrenaline was high or not. Active Ear Pro is easy to do. I keep a pair of swordens next to the bed. Done, right? Ear Pro, you you have you have to have it, man. Like. Yeah, cool. You won the gunfight, but you're outside talking to the cops. Like, hey, come in the front door because you're deaf. 
right? Because auditory exclusion, it's not a real thing. So guys, there is a look at some home defense stuff, loadouts, firearms, ammunition considerations, and some stuff that you maybe have thought about, maybe you haven't, maybe it's good just to hear somebody put words to it. So again, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.